I'll be teaching you how to remotely control any TVs with this simple step-by-step -step instruction. And the even better part is that you can screen whatever is happening on TV and you can use your keyboard and your mouse to control the TV. This is really fun and exciting. So let's go ahead and see what are steps. There are three steps that we can follow to make this happen. Step one, we need to enable something called Android Debug Bridge inside our TV. So once that is enabled, it allows us on step two to use A, V, B, Connect to remotely control from our laptop or our desktop over into the TV. And the final step, we just have to install a piece of software into our laptop called SCRCPY and we'll be able to remotely screen and control any TVs from there. So the very first thing that you need is a TV. So without a TV, the tutorial kind of ends here if you don't have a TV, but no worries. You can watch me since I do have a TV and the TV, of course, does have Wi-Fi connectivity. And right now I'm turning on a TV using the remote control. And as I say, the first thing we need to do is to enable developable options. So let me go ahead and enable that. Okay, so what I have here right now is, of course, uh, the TV that we're all really familiar with. And what we got to do is to hit all the way to the top and we can just select onto settings. All right. And from settings, what I can do now is I can see that, of course, I do have the good thing is I do have the network and the Internet being enabled. So it's connected to Loy Network. And if I scroll down further, of course, I have device preferences. OK, and I can click under about. So what we're trying to do here now is to turn on the ability to have Android debug breach running for us. OK, so what we got to do is hit over into build and we just have to press on it seven times. OK, so I'll just click onto it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you can see there, there was a pop up about being a developer. So now we have the developer mode. And what I do now is I head back over to the earlier screen. All right, the device preferences. OK, and I can click on to developer options that is now available. All right, so let me go ahead and click onto that. Let me just move the camera a little nearer. OK, so it's easier for us to see the settings and all. All right, so what I have here now is we have enable developer options. I can scroll down. All right. And there's something here called USB debugging. OK, so select onto it. So we say, yes, we want to allow USB debugging. All right. For development purposes. Now, with that. All right. With this being enabled, it means that we are going to be able to connect to it through the network using any of the computers that has Android debug bridge installed. What we need to do as well is to get the IP address of the TV. So what I can do now is I can hit over into the settings. All right. So over here, you can see under network and Internet, I can select onto that, click onto the connected network and right here. OK, this is the one. The IP address over here is 192.168.0.109 and we'll be connecting to it from our computer. Going back to the computer here, if you have not installed Android Debug Bridge, you need to go over to Android Studio. And you can see right here, we have the SDK Software Development Platform Tools. So all you got to do is just scroll down over. So if you're on Windows, on Mac or Linux, select the one that you're using. So go ahead and click Download SDK Platform. Read through this and click download. And you can see right here that I'm downloading over into this specific folder. I can click save on it. And once the download is done, all we got to do is just go ahead and extract and install it. And you can see right here, I have extracted the downloaded zip file. And we can see here there are several executables that we can use. And the one that we'll be using to connect over into the TV will be called adb.exe. And of course, to look more like a pro hacker, you can see right here, I have command prompt fired up and we have navigated over into the specific folder where ADB is running. So I can enter adb.exe, I hit enter on that. And here are all the different types of options, parameters that we can enter in order for us to connect over into the TV.
So if we call the IP address, all we got to do right now is enter the following of adb.exe followed by connect 192.168.0.109 followed by port 5555. Hit enter on this and it states the following, already connected. So if you are connecting for the first time, you will see something else, but I've already connected to it once. So we're able to get this up and running. Next up, what I can do is go ahead and enter ADB devices to see the connected devices. And of course, right now it's stating unauthorized and we need to allow it in the TV. So from the TV, you see a pop-up. So what's really important is that we need to permit. So you can see right here, we have allow USB debugging and we need to use the remote control to select onto allow. So I'll go ahead and select onto allow. And now this gives us the permission to remotely control and manage the TV. Now what I can do is go ahead and enter the following of ADB devices. And you can see right here, we have the connected device. So it means that we're able to connect and control it. Now that we're connected, we are able to control it in the command prompt. So say for example, I enter ADB shell, you can see right here, we are on C-R-O-O-D-S. And say for example, I enter who am I? Is it shell? I can enter IP ADDR to get the IP address. So in this case, you can see right here, I have the following IP address of 192.168.0.109. So this is the IP address of the TV that we're now remotely controlling it. And of course, I can navigate across the TV. So for example, I can enter print working directory, can enter LS, I can see all the data, all the storage, the SD cards, if any, inside the TV. To take this to the next level, we need to use a software that can allow us to mirror what is happening on the TV and allow us to use simple tools like keyboards and mouse to navigate across the TV, allowing us to control it seamlessly. And this is where SCRCPY comes into play. And you can go ahead and download this on the releases. So you scroll all the way down, you can see right here, these are all the different available assets that we have. So again, if you're on Linux, you can download it, Mac OS, Win32, Win64. Okay, so go ahead and click onto it and download the zip file. So right here, I have navigated into the folder where I have downloaded and extracted SCRCPY. And all I got to do right now is enter, say for example, directory, and we'll be using this specific one over here called scrcpy.executable. So go ahead and enter scrcpy, all right, followed by .exe, hit enter on that. And very soon, we will have a pop-up that will allow us to control it. So let me just go ahead and enter the following. Once more, all right, scrcpy.exe, hit enter on that again. All right, so it states the following, I have a Xiaomi TV, and you see a pop-up right here. Okay, so this is it. It's done, we're in. We have full remote control of the TV. And for example, I can click, and we can navigate out of here. So I can also go back to the earlier command prompt. All right, so I can clear on this one. I can insert some commands. All right, so in this case, say for example, I am going to use the following to demonstrate that. All right, so let me just put this into the right windows. So for example, on the left is the remote control commands. And on the right side, I have the remote connection to the TV. So what I have here is ADB shell input key event three. I hit enter on that. And you can see right here, we have now headed back over into the home page of the TV. The other super cool command that we can launch is going to be ADB shell, and we will target a specific YouTube channel here, which is of course, Mr. Hackle Law's YouTube channel, your best friend forever. I hit enter on this, and you see the following. We're now launching over into YouTube, we're opening up YouTube, and then we're heading over into Mr. Hackle Law's YouTube channel, which is of course, your favorite YouTube channel.